And while Trump was in Michigan, GOP candidates shared the debate stage for a second time, sharing the highlights with us tonight is one America's one and only Tom McGrath. Thank you so much for having me, Katie. You're so very welcome. Well, Tom, there's a lot to unpack here, mm -hmm. or maybe not. We just want to know who were tonight's winners and losers? Uh, first and foremost, I'd say the losers are us. Um, I don't know about your opinion, <laughs> but I think that the debate honestly sucked. It, there wasn't a lot of substance. Sure, there were some jabs here and there, some things you could clip out for a highlight reel. But overall, it was a lot of people talking over each other, a lot of interruptions, and moderators who seemed like they were really passive parents. They're like, okay, guys, I'm going to shut off their mics this time. And nobody cared. Even in the last uh, remarks of the debate, the question that they tried to get was like, who are you voting off of the island? Um, and nobody even went along with the question. And I think it ended up with Vivek giving his speech to the American people. And that was it. Um, what was your opinion of the debate? So I watched it. I watched mm -hmm. it in full. I think that Nikki Haley kind of came off a little rude. It was see. It seemed like the people there watching didn't want to hear anything they had to say. The person that was mainly missing was Trump, mm -hmm. and obviously Chris Christie was sitting there saying, "We know you're watching," even though he's in Michigan with UAW workers figuring out what they're going to do with their leadership and what's going on with the strike and the negotiations at the table. He doesn't care. You can you can see he sees all of these other candidates trying to win in these polls. They're not coming close. They're falling incredibly short. And it's shown in the debates tonight. It was embarrassing watching all of that. The survivor question that you mentioned, where it was like, who are you voting off the island? Mm -hmm. I mean... Chris Christie jumping down ready to say Trump, it seemed almost like he had all of his remarks prepared. And so... Do you think heads, he got the questions? I don't know if they got the questions beforehand, but it so seemed either. like when they had the questions, they had something ready that was related to it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It was, it was a lot going on there. Not a lot to be said about it. And it seemed as if they were just trying to take digs at everybody, including... Tim Scott this time, you, yeah. you said it yourself, talking over each other. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was pretty rough. I think it's just because Tim Scott, Senator Scott's um, reputation for people in the GOP presidential debate is that he's soft, that he's going to be a pushover. And the whole reason that Trump got the nomination in 2016 was because this was a guy who was going to fight for us. So this time around, Tim Scott tried to say, like, tried to show that he was capable of landing some jabs, so he tried to take it to Vivek uh, about um, being bought and paid for. That was a remark that apparently stung. He tried to get into it with Nikki Haley about curtains, um, which she claimed had been financed by the Obama administration. And then there was a point, because they were trying to differentiate each other, that he started talking about Ukraine aid. He was saying 90% of Ukraine aid, and I was ready for him to say, is pocketed and embezzled and then he said is alone and then that immediately pushed that tough guy persona that he was trying to put forth and i was like ah now he just seems kind of i don't know like innocent gullible i don't know where to go with that and i like tim scott as a senator i just think that uh, maybe he's not the right choice for a presidential candidate um what did you think of vivek's performance i think Vivek did a really decent job. I do see that he changed his position on some things. A lot of comments are going on on X right now, and it's just talking about how he's too young still. Everybody's coming at him for not having enough experience in the field, and he's kind of touting his business experience, and that's something that Trump did when he first ran. So I think that he's trying to follow in his footsteps, but I don't know if he's losing his footing at this point. Seems like he's taken back on a lot of his promises when he first had the plans, and it just seemed very irrelevant to the questions that they were asking. He didn't seem as prepared this time as he did the first time, and I, I'm i rooting for that one. I think that we do need younger presidential candidates or at least different cabinet positions where we have a voice, because I'm a Zillennial. I don't claim myself as a Gen Z or Millennial, but he's out here trying to fight for the younger generation. And there was a lot of talk about TikTok tonight, and he's pushing for it, Nikki Haley's yelling at him. And it just, like I said, not, not prepared, very irrelevant. 
And it brings me to another question because obviously Trump decided not to show up. He has recently said that it's a waste of his time mm. while Chris Christie's like, you're just ducking a different problem. So I just want to see how you think this was even relevant when the top GOP candidate wasn't even there. He, does, did he need to be there? Do you think that he should be showing up? I mean, if you're playing the game of politics, the answer is no. He's already pretty much got it in the bag unless some mm. extra, yeah, so some event happens that takes him off. But uh, that being said, if you want transparency with the American people, I think that you should debate. Now, I don't know exactly what Trump's strategy is. I'm not running his campaign. But uh, that being said, Chris Christie trying to say, oh, you know, Trump, you're ducking us. Uh, if you add up all of their poll numbers together, they still don't even beat Trump. And that was everybody on that stage. Um, so then the question is, what are people, what do people have to gain? Chris Christie could easily be a CNN pundit after this. I think he's the most popular GOP candidate with Democrats. Uh, Vivek Ramaswamy, to me, almost seems like a vice presidential candidate. He hasn't really attacked Trump that often, and some of the things that he does on stage are Trump-esque. Uh, DeSantis, I think, actually was in it trying to win it, but uh, the tide has turned. And although uh, DeSantis has been a fantastic governor of Florida, his delivery comes off as flat. And we've seen since 2016 that you need some sort of a flair in order to get the GOP nomination. Uh, Nick, do you have any idea why Nikki Haley might be running? I, at this point, have no idea. A lot of the candidates that were there today, based on their actions and their representation of the Republican Party, it seems as if they might be dropping out. And I don't, it sounds like they're holding on for little to no reason. Like I said, I think Vivek really did hold his own there again. Mm -hmm. It seemed like he was being talked over a bunch, but he got some good points out there, especially about the gender epidemic happening yeah. out here, claiming it's mental health. Mm -hmm. That's something that I'd like to touch on. I don't know if you have more of an opinion on that. Did you think that he did a good job with that answer? Um, I strongly disagree with it. Um, I think that out of any of the candidates on the stage, he seemed the least cookie cutter. Uh, I think I saw Megyn Kelly tweet out, or I'm sorry, X out, if that's even a verb. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know this was an MSNBC debate. Some of the answers just seemed a little watered down. It's like, okay, we all agree the border is bad. How do you deal with it? Vivek said, let's end natural born citizenship. That's at least a stance that I haven't heard said on a debate stage. I didn't see anyone else espouse it. I think I heard Tim Scott jump in and say, yeah, it was intended originally for slavery, and now it's become a gateway into the United States for a lot of people. Um, but other than that, meh. It was content. Tom, I wish there was more content and more to pull out of that, but <laughs> I think that that kind of does it for the GOP debates mm -hmm. tonight. Thank uh, you so much for coming on. Hey, thanks for having me, Katie. Absolutely. We'd like to welcome you to our new home for uncensored news and hard-hitting talk shows. If you're tired of cable companies and social media giants chipping away at your most basic and important right, freedom of speech, by shadow banning, demonetizing, censoring, and policing every single one of your posts, then One America News on Locals is just what you've been looking for. Finally, you'll have the freedom to express your point of view and stay connected with like-minded fellow patriots. And the best part is, OAN on Locals is only five bucks a month. All of our credible, honest, unbiased reporting, ad-free talk shows, and exclusive content, all at the fraction of the cost of cable. So to watch, just click the Join button to get the news you can't get anywhere else.